Hey everybody. So today I'm gonna be making my world famous shepherd's pie. My mother is from England and shepherd's pie was always a staple in our home. And I think mine is actually better than my mother's. So today I'm gonna show you that recipe. Um, measurements are gonna be a little sketchy because I don't measure things. I just kind of know, but I'm gonna film as I go. So hopefully you can tell from what I'm doing, by what I'm doing, um, what the measurements might be. So let's go. Okay, so I hope you can see what I'm doing right here. Um, first of all, ground beef, just regular, re <clears throat> regular ground beef. This is from Walmart. You want two pounds. This is a four pound jobby job because my husband, he wants to get the four pounder. So I'm gonna cut this in half approximately. So you want two pounds of ground beef. Boom, that in the pan. I'm gonna move this. I need to put that in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Okay, two pounds of ground beef. We're gonna brown that. You're gonna want some brown gravy. The McCormick's brown gravy, to me, tastes the best. I also have some Bisto. You can find this in the international aisle of your grocery store. It's a British uh, instant gravy mix for beef. So I'm also gonna add in some of that. Beef bouillon, two cubes. As you can guess, this is a salty dish. <laughs> it's pretty salty. Also, I do flavor it with adobo. And it's just basically salt. It's just more salt. It's a different form of salt that's gonna go in here. Okay, so Bisto brown gravy adobo those are your if i can stop the camera from doing that these are your salty seasonings right here also while the meat is browning um you're also going to want to make some mashed potatoes so just regular old russet potatoes you're going to want to um peel these put them in the pot let me get to browning the meat getting it seasoned. Also, you're gonna need mixed vegetables. Hold on, let me get okay, those. Okay, so you're gonna need mixed vegetables here. I prefer the mixed vegetables that don't have the lima beans. Not a lima bean fan. So this is just green beans, carrots, corn, peas, that's it. And you're not gonna need this whole bag. You're only gonna need like two, three cups maybe. We'll see when we get there. Like I said, I don't know measurements for anything so okay so we're just gonna brown some ground beef here I'm not gonna put any seasoning in just yet because after this is all browned I want to drain off all of the fat all right so the meat is browned I'm gonna use a colander to drain off the fat and then we will start seasoning. So next I wanna add in two bouillon cubes, beef bouillon. These are way easier to open up when I'm not filming, for sure. Holy jeez. There we go. Okay. Bouillon cube added. Um, just putting this on medium, medium heat. At this point, I am going to add a little bit of adobo. This is the adobo um, with pepper. Con pepper. Just... Watch what I'm doing, see what I'm doing. I don't measure that, whatever that is. Like two teaspoons, two teaspoons, we're gonna say. Like I said, this I might make this too salty for any health guidelines. <laughs> it's too salty. Ah, okay, 
So I'm gonna fill up um, my measuring cup with two cups of water and I'm gonna add the gravy. Okay, I lied, that's about a cup and a half. Cup and a half of water. What you're gonna want is two of these single gravy packets. I have one of the large gravy packets and there's only about like one packets worth left in here. So you want two of these, two of these McCormick brown gravy packets, two bouillon cubes and some Bisto and some adobo. Get all your salt into this ground beef. So what this is also gonna do is, it's like a thickener. It's gonna be a gravy, but we're gonna, with this, as it cooks, you know, of course it's gonna get thicker. But also, I'm gonna add the Bisto, because the Bisto has its own flavor, but it's also a thickener. So this is gonna be a thick, thick, meaty, thick mix when we go to put it in the casserole dish, and I don't have much left, so let me get this good and hot again, because the Bisto will clump up if it's not hot when you add it. So I've turned up the heat just to get this going, and then I will add some Bisto. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid on, and I'm gonna let this meat simmer in this gravy for maybe, I'd say 10 minutes on a low, medium low heat. Just kind of let that flavor get in there real good. Well, this is thickening up. I'm gonna get another half a cup of water before I add the Bisto. Half a cup of water. Now this Bisto I'm gonna say this is about a tablespoon and a half. So you may want two tablespoons. I'm gonna say on a normal day, I bet I put a quarter cup of Bisto in here. Just do it to your liking till you get a thick gravy sauce going on in here. Y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's starting to thicken up real quick. Excellent. And I'm gonna taste a piece to see if it's the right amount of salty. Ah. Nope, more salt. That's where the adobo comes in. Just another like half of a teaspoon right there. Not too, too much. Because my husband hates salt. I love salt, but he doesn't like it when it's too salty. Okay, let's see. Try another piece. Ow, that's hot. Okay, okay, that's good. Add a little bit more because here in a minute, I'm gonna put these uh, frozen vegetables in here and it will dilute it just a bit. So, whatever that was. Like I said, I've been making this for years and I have never measured it, so I apologize. Just kinda watch what I'm doing. I bet there's probably a tablespoon or two of adobo in here at this point. So I'm gonna turn it back down to low, medium low. And I'm just gonna let that I'm gonna let that cook in the gravy for a minute. All right, the meat's been simmering about five minutes. 10 minutes was way too long. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I've just never measured this before, so. And this is really thick, love it. It will loosen up a little bit because the vegetables are frozen and that water is gonna melt. Here we go. Like I said, I don't measure, 
I'm betting that's about two cups. Let's see. I just want to make sure. Well, hell. Look, I'm putting that in there. Because this is a personal kitchen. It's not a restaurant. So, okay. All right. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. like that. I'm also going to add another half cup of water because I don't want it to be too thick. Right, that's probably more like a quarter cup. Anyway, I just want to loosen it up a little bit. There we go. That's nice. That's what you want to see. That right there. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on this. And this time, I will keep the lid on um, with it around medium low for about 10 minutes because you want the vegetables to thaw out. You want the flavor of all the salts from the gravy and the adobo and the bouillon. You want all that to get into the vegetables. Okay. Put the lid back on. There we go. While this is infusing the vegetables with flavor, I'm gonna peel some potatoes. Okay, so I just finished peeling about seven medium, I don't know if I call them large. If you get them in this 10 pound, I mean, whatever size that is, I would call that a medium potato. Would make a nice size baked potato at a restaurant. Not too big, not too small. So seven of those in this pot here. And I'm gonna fill this with water, a little bit of salt. I'm gonna boil them till they're fork tender so I can, you know, pick them up with a fork and they're not mush, but they're not crunchy. They're just right. Okay. All right, so the potatoes are on the stove here. Right there. You can rinse them off if you want. Oh, look at all that smoke. You can rinse off your potatoes if you want. I don't feel the need to do that. I don't care if there's potato dirt in my potato boiling water. And I'm just gonna add a little bit, maybe a lot of it, of salt to the water with the potatoes. It just makes the potatoes taste better so they're not bland. We're gonna bring this to a rolling boil and then turn it down. And like I said, we're gonna boil these until they are just, I can pick them up with a fork. I'll get out the hand mixer and mix them up. Some yummy mashed potatoes. This looks amaze balls and it smells amaze balls. Oh my god! All right, so that looks pretty good. Pretty good. I'm gonna call that pretty much done. Let's have a taste. Taste. Like I said, this is not a restaurant. For me and my husband, I'm just gonna eat right out of it. Okay. Mm. That's good. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off, put the lid on so it stays warm, and wait for my potatoes to be done. Uh, if you're a better cook than me, you would have your potatoes already going so that when this is done, that's done, and you can pop it in the oven. Also, I forgot to mention, Preheat your oven to 350 because you're gonna put your filling in the casserole dishes. You're gonna put your mashed potatoes on top. You're gonna make a nice mashed potato layer. 
and then you're going to cover the top of those mashed potatoes with um, American cheese and shredded cheese, like shredded cheddar. And you're going to put that in the oven just until the cheese melts on top and gets a little golden and bubbly, and then it's done. It's going to be so good. Okay, potatoes are ready. They might be a little more than fork tender. I just rinsed them off. They are a little mush, which means we're gonna add a lot less milk, a lot less milk or cream because they're already soft. I am gonna add, hold on, I'm gonna add some butter. It's about a half a stick of butter. It's what I had left in the fridge. Real butter. I suppose you can use margarine. To me, that's gross. But you do you for this one, for your mashed potatoes. Make your mashed potatoes how you like your mashed potatoes. So I'm just cutting up this half a stick of butter into smaller pieces, adding it to the potatoes. You do not have to blend your potatoes in the pot that you cooked them in. I just do that. Okay, half a stick of butter. Probably, what is that? A quarter, half, probably a half a cup of cream if you're gonna do cream. Ooh, that's good stuff right there. All right, so half stick of butter, half a cup of cream. You can also use whole milk, skim milk. Again, just do your mashed potatoes how you like your mashed potatoes. Okay. This mixer was a wedding gift for my first marriage back in 1994. 94. It's old. It still works great. It is a uh, best, best blend from West Bend. It's probably from Walmart, but it was a gift and it works great. It's still kicking after all these years. All right, I'm probably gonna make a mess. I am not adding salt to my potatoes, mashed potatoes, because there was salt in the water. Plenty of salt. We got a lot of salt going on in this dish. So, oh, these are beautiful. These are beautiful potatoes. So creamy and fluffy. Beautiful. Okay. Done. How pretty that is, that's gorgeous. All right. Okay, here we go. This is the meat mixture, meat and vegetable mixture. Oh, it smells, it smells so good. We have floor vents, and so it keeps blowing my shirt. Anyway, I tried to close this one, but it's not closed all the way. There we go, now it is. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, maybe, is that gonna work? Is it gonna, okay. So I'm just making an even layer in my casserole dish. And then I'm gonna spoon the mashed potatoes on top. Just gonna spoon it on. Now what can happen when you put your potatoes in here, it can displace the meat mixture and make it start to like, wanna seep out the sides. So if you can get your globs in here, get it in the corners to keep your meat contained. You need to block off that access so it can't spill out over the side. Get your globs in all the corners and then we'll smooth it out. And then you're just gonna do this little thing, this little move right here. A little more. Looks like I have just the right amount of potatoes to cover this dish and to eat some with a spoon while it's cooking. Nope, oh, making a mess. Okay, 
That looks so good. I can't wait to eat it. So yeah, that took most. There's not very much left. So seven medium large size potatoes for this dish that I will put on the screen the size of it because I don't remember. It's this size. Okay. Next step is to add the cheese. Now, American cheese is atrocious. It's awful. It's disgusting. Especially when it's cold. Gross. But I'm going to tell you, when it's melted on stuff, especially mashed potatoes, it's delicious. I'm sorry. It's just really good. Really creamy. I mean, you could also use a Velveeta, another trash cheese, but man, when it's melted on stuff, it's so good. So I'm gonna put about six pieces on here. And like I said, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. So I have my American cheese and then I'm gonna use some mild cheddar. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over. gonna be good so we are now gonna put this in the oven 350 degree oven until the cheese is all melty and bubbly that's it, it shouldn't take long Now this is not gonna be in a nice piece, like a solid piece. This is gonna fall apart. Oh, 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 but look how delicious. Look how delicious and it smells so good. This is like a meat pie, shepherd's pie. Look, there it is. Not fancy, no parsley garnish. It's probably the worst video for the best shepherd's pie you'll ever have. Enjoy. <laughs> 